besides your baby daddy, what's the most painful thing you've gone through in life? <laughs> oh, I no, did that well. Oh, no. that was good. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no that was good. <laughs> Yes. There should be like a little prayer to say, it's about to go down. <laughs> so there are aspects of my life um, that I will never reveal um, that are between myself, my Is, family. And we um, became and who God. we are because of that past and that history. Mm. We became strong women mm. because we know who we are. Our fundis and all of that, I mean, I heard the, the audible voice of God. It wasn't the decision. The decision. It wasn't the decision. It was a panic. That, that one, yeah. <laughs> like Christ himself. What was that about? Yes. I don't even so know. So you can't know. just trust um, the person who was able to initiate a relationship with your husband knowingly and trust them with your life, with your kid. A fancy restaurant um, in a beautiful place in South Africa. And he left you with Love them. Seven Love them. Foods, babe. He's not circumcised. I'm not saying. I already do, do it. Like yes. Will it marry what you say you're doing? Which is Drakensberg, the Garden Route, Afriski, Mozambique, anywhere you can think of. Dimani Travel and Tours is at your service. By organizing the entire itinerary for you, you don't have to stress about accommodation, transport, activities. In fact, the only stress you'll have is which outfit to wear on which day. WhatsApp Dimani Travel and Tours on 081-567-7563 or find them on your favorite social media platforms. The show is Engineer Your Life and I'm Lungelo KM. It's yet another beautiful day in my garden. Um, you, you can see that I'm very happy when we have episodes in the garden and not in the studio because, I mean, I'm one with nature. We are born and I know I'm always wearing black, but no, man, nature. You're born and it's in nature. Um, it's another amazing episode. Today we have a lovely, lovely lady. I, it seems to be a trend where I'm having ladies, so my gents do something. Even irrelevant because it's in this, Engineer Your Life. <laughs> Um, she's an actress on a very, very amazing show. Um, the beauty of what the world has become now is that AMA streamers have allowed people to become international from the word go. So she's on Showmax and she's on the show called Adulting or Adulting, however you pronounce it. Her name is Londega Sishi. She's a beautiful woman, as I said, but there is more to her beyond her beauty, I know. And we will get to know that. Hello, Londega. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really honored and excited to be here. Thank you for having me. How are you? See, right, Yazi. She said, Take with me, Getina. Our show is shot in Durban for those who don't know, for those who are new, who are maybe here for Rulondega. Um, and thank you for honoring the invites and coming all the way to Durban. Pella, so was she? I am saying, you, You're digging for gold. I'm looking for the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the bag. But yeah, I'm. I'm it's a pleasure. Mm, I mm, look forward mm. to this. So, what does your mom say when you're having sex on TV? Wow, straight into it, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no warnings. Um, the honest truth is we haven't spoken about it. We have not addressed it at all. And it was something that I was very, very nervous about. Because yeah. um, she's a pastor. Really? So, yes, my yeah. mom's a pastor. Our PK, yeah. yeah <laughs> so, um, you can imagine, like... Um, when I told her I was going to shoot this thing, she was mm -hmm. excited because of course. she knows it's something I've been wanting to do. Um, but I didn't obviously give a context to say this is exactly what we're shooting. Yeah, yeah, um, When yeah. it came out, when, uh, when the first episode was about to air, she made announcements. She was excited, <laughs> telling the congregation, <laughs> bless the Lord. Um, and then I had to like just be off my phone for a while. Yeah. And we just then never got back to it. Really? <laughs> you never addressed it. Um, is, she, is she so conservative to a point that she doesn't get that it's acting or does it really go against her her her, her moral standing well, even though it's acting there are certain things you shouldn't agree to um look my mom's very old school i come from a very very strict home uh my mom is all right all right all wrong, all wrong. yeah uh, yeah but my mom is also i think she's evolved and she's grown so much as a parent and as a person um, and I think she's now fully confident in the way that she's raised us as well. So um, in her conservativeness, in her strictness, she's also very loving and very supporting. And um, she understands that we won't do anything um, that doesn't... We believe in something called the Holy Spirit. Mm, what, mm, what, mm. What, what your Holy Spirit doesn't allow, align with or allow you to do, you won't do it. I and she you. has confidence in that and she supports, I guess, the decisions that we made. 
Um, so she's been very supportive. Yeah, she's been, she's yeah. been, she's been amazing. I've been surprised. I won't lie. I very surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. she's been incredible. Um, have on the backdrop of you saying you had to switch off your phone for a few days or ignore people for a few days after the episode has aired. Um, how many times have you found yourself saying, "I knew I wanted to act, and acting is a passion, yeah. but fame is overwhelming." Oh my god, that is. A daily struggle. I will not really? even lie to you. Um, after, I think after the third episode of Adulting Ed, my numbers started shooting on social media. Yeah. I started being recognized by people outside. Well, it, it, it's, it actually happened after the first episode, but after the third episode, it became really overwhelming that I had to just like disappear. Mm -hmm. And I had to actually seek counseling on some, um, what is happening? What is going on? It's been overwhelming for a lot of reasons. Um, some people may say this sounds crazy, but I think the love has been overwhelming and okay. I appreciate it so much. But when you're not used to it and you're not accustomed to it, it's scary. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you've convinced yourself and life has convinced you that you're not deserving of good things, you're not deserving of love, you're not deserving of... Isn't it? When good things happen to you, you become so afraid because you're like, like, what is this? You know, so it's been, it's been, um, it's forced me to kind of dig deep into a lot of trauma it's forced me to kind of start um affirming myself and telling myself that no but you're fearfully and wonderfully made no but god said this and this and that and that and that but it's been a journey it's been i won't lie it's been scary it still is scary D does every day beneath the scariness is there a londaga who feels like god is giving me a hug for all the times i cried when i couldn't live this dream that I'm living or I've started to live you're gonna make me cry <laughs> you're actually gonna make me cry um yeah yeah I definitely think that um I had a long talk with my casting director um afterwards where I just on the phone half the time I was just crying I'm like so he he was listening mm. you know so he wasn't um just pressing skip so all the heartache, all these things weren't for nothing, you know. Um, geez, God, you actually recognized my voice. Um, and as much as you didn't do it at my time and in my, at my beck and call, but you did it. You did it. And it was such a, a moment of reverence for me, a moment, a turning, turning point for me as well in my spiritual journey, in my, just in my journey, you know. So, yes, I've broken down a couple of times just in awe yeah like wow are you, yeah. are, 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 are you not scared though that it's going to build a, a londega you no longer recognize because the, the overwhelming love your numbers will get to a point where it will also come with a overwhelming discredit hate yeah. um, scrutiny into your personal life into mm -hmm. things that people were never privy to or maybe yeah. that's just not who londega is mm -hmm. and londega doesn't share those parts of her life with her yeah um I, I, I'm, I'm one person who, who really loves and embraces change. Um, in fact, I've even got a blog and there's something I wrote about transformations and transitions. Um, I believe that life prepares you for everything that you're going to go through. The preparation process, you don't, we don't always get it. We don't, even, we don't always understand what's happening and what we're being prepared for. But I think Unkunukulu really does prepare you for things like that. Um, he, he undresses you, undoes you. He, he prepares you for it. And I think... Um, I truly, truly believe in the verse that says he goes before you. Um, and he, yeah. Um, I do I, I do acknowledge that that can happen, but I also acknowledge that God is faithful in the sense that he has been preparing me for this. He has been preparing me for this. Um, so, yeah. I, I look forward to meeting that Londega. Yeah. I actually look forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's interesting where I've, I've observed, um, I, I mean, we're meeting for the first time today, but I've just observed from the background yeah. how you are sort of taking the fame with a lot of grace. Yeah, thank you. Um, you're, not, you're not putting it in our faces. There, there are a lot of people whom when they have a platform as big as Unkulu Nkulu has given you, um, they want to do everything quickly now because yeah. I'm trending now, I'm famous now. <laughs> so let me launch, let me have a song. Let me launch a skincare line. Let One me do it. this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, look, look, I'm confused. Yeah. I think, I think at this point, sometimes when people are like, 
how yeah i'm like <laughs> 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 what are you talking about yeah. i think i'm actually still so confused as to what's actually happening in my world um yeah like i like i said to you it's been it's been such a it's, oh, it's such a crazy transition um um because for a while i also felt like i was an observer like i was beside myself watching all of these things happen so i i'm still very confused so i don't think there's anything that i can do right now that would make like sense outside of this you know um yeah i don't consider myself somebody famous as yet i don't consider myself a celebrity <laughs> i don't know what that is i don't know what that comes with yeah yeah, yeah. No, i don't i still um and i was very fortunate to have a conversation again with ooh, i love conversating I had a conversation with U Debucho, one of our commissioning editors at Showmax. Mm. And he said to me, um, I see something in you. You're going to be great. It's going to be. But if I can tell you one thing, remain grounded. Uh, yeah. keep, your fr- keep the things that keep you close to you. Keep those things close to you. And you will never like go astray. So I think um, even that gift of having my close friends have just stayed. They stay hugging me, family, um, people that have always been in my life, just kind of reminding me, Wuti, hey, you've been praying for this. Um, so the capacity to handle it, continue to pray for it. Yeah, Don't yeah, just yeah, now yeah, want yeah. to become, you know, what you're not. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'll <laughs> come back. I'll come back to this topic of how things have 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 transformed in your life yeah. um, spiritually, yeah. but I want to go on to the practical aspect of the first day you get onto set and you find all these. There are there are a lot of young people on on adulting, which is something that's commendable. Yeah. That a lot of young people have been given a chance to display their their skill. But there's also or there there are thespians there. Yes. There are people who've been in the industry for a long time, and these people have carried themselves with grace as well. Hence, mm. they've had the longevity. Yeah. Um, you read your script and you realize that you'll be working with Tim Gosey, one of the most beautiful men in South Africa. <laughs> 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 what does it do to you? Woo. Um, so I was. And I want your honest truth. I'm gonna give you the. Please. I'm gonna give you yes. the, the scoop, right? <laughs> so I, I, funny enough, before I met him, Gosi, I had a crush on him like a long time ago, mm, and mm, I happened mm. to be very good friends. You and half the country. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I happened to be good friends with uh, Uguenzo, Uguenzo yes. who's a very good friend of his. Okay. And I remember back then I was like, "Oh, pal, I'm going to do the thing," you know. Um. And so when I obviously auditioned, I had no idea it was going to be him. And that was a long time ago. The crush was gone by the time I went to set. <laughs> but he's still a beautiful guy. Yeah. Um, so I then, I get there and they're like, oh, you're going to be acting with this guy. I was intimidated. I was like, I really want this, but he's so amazing. He's going to outdo me. He's going to outshine mm, me. Mm, I'm just going to, mm, you know. Mm, mm. Um, but I got there and I think, like you're saying, Guti, they are, they've, they've been, there's a reason why they've, um, survived this long and you and I got to see that he was such a a welcoming very calm very reserved very mm, you know yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a KZN thing it's a KZN thing yeah. he was just so a comment he was not in his head about who he is he's just like he was yeah very teaching very generous with his knowledge so and for me I think I had the pressure of like I need to I like I'd really like this I really, really want this. So I need to kind of... Step up. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think for me, there was pressure. Um, there there were big names. So if you are underperforming, you're going to stick out. You know? So for me, I think that was the thing. Which I really need to perform and I need to get into it. And they were very helpful and very, yeah, nurturing in, yeah. in helping me do that. What what where do you have to take your mind to be able to portray falling in love with someone on screen? So on your daily preparation, when you're reading your script mm. and you're preparing your psyche, where where do you have to go to be able to? For me, as Lungelo or and, and the millions of yeah. viewers who consume the content, we need to see you fall in love with this person. Yeah. Where do you? Wh- what do you have to think of? Where do you take yourself? Yo, go back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, first of all, completely far removed from yourself. Yeah. Um, especially if you, like I said, if you don't have good reference of what that is, you have to 
be so far removed from yourself. Um, you have to dig deep into what you know love to be according to movies and all these things. And also understand the character of the person that you're going to be portraying. Understanding her story. Her There's something called the character bible. So getting to know where she comes from, what she believes in and all of those things. But more, more importantly, removing, killing yourself essentially um and i was talking to another uh, lady who's coming up who uh, i was working on uh, with on another project and she was saying she's so excited to be on set she feels like she comes alive and i'm like that's interesting i feel like i die on set and and that's what i that's why i love it okay you know because i get there and i can you get escape to, your I life get to completely escape and become yeah. whoever that person is um so it's literally that in order to fall in love with the person that you're supposed to fall in love with or to portray your character as authentically and as truthfully as possible you can't, you have to remove yourself from it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because also, Londega is conservative about okay. a lot of stuff. I'm okay. very, yeah, well, I'm very Nyasaba, you know? Mkanyezi <laughs> is bold. She's just like, okay, let's I'm gonna be posh. Oh, yeah, she's within, you know? Um, so, yeah, you have to kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, 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 on the same breath of Unkanyezi being a bold woman versus Olondega who's conservative so you're saying these people are running on completely parallel trajectories I think um, there are quite there, there's quite a few similarities um, but I think I believe do you believe in like a higher self and yourself Would okay you, every person has a higher version of their being mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i feel as though Ungadi a self-actualized version yes, yes absolutely a yes. person who's more aware and who's more in tune and yeah. who's more you know and i feel like Ungadi is that version of me um so i think she's somebody that i can relate to because we have a lot of similarities but i love the fact that she has kind of shed off a lot of the stuff that i'm still battling um and she's become she's she's, she's at a point where she's aware man and I love that. But isn't that isn't that toxic if it's not kept? Um, when I say kept, I don't mean it in a way that as a woman, your light should be dimmed. Yeah. But I'm saying um, in life, we need to share power, give yes. each other power dynamics. Yes. And what comes across for Munkanyezi is that she struggles with sharing power. And that has caused a lot of conflict with yeah. Ubonga um, in, in that case. Yeah. Um, people have to share power. So maybe there's nothing wrong with Londega not being as super confident, borderline arrogant as Ganyezi is. Yeah. He here's the thing. I actually, um, I don't think Ganyezi is, is, is arrogant per se. I think how, just how life works in terms of like our upbringing and the things that we go through and how we start to kind of define what love, success, life is for ourselves. Um, she can be misunderstood she loves and she loves hard and she's very protective and she wants what's best for not just Wonga, but for the friends as well um and she is just basically trying to be that voice of reason to say but you're so great why do why do these friends not call you to be umkong why is it always bail me out of jail why is it always sure. show me your friends i'll show you a future yeah type of yeah thing? yeah um and if you're going to be a good friend who wants these friends of yours to kind of grow and whatever it is help them yeah you know yeah, guide yeah, them towards yeah most yeah, because there's there's a thing she says they would see we are trying to move we are trying to see oh everything is going to be okay mm, mm, mm. don't be that guy if you are your friends your brother's keeper be your brother's keeper mm, type mm, of mm, thing mm. and if you want to see yeah long 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 Ne? Uh, there's a chance ne? Puma, there's a chance at some point you have to cut that off at some point you have to yeah. be like come on yeah that's cool lady. so i don't think it's necessarily her being judgmental and her not accepting the friends and her wanting to control it's just her being so protective and so in love that she's like dude when's mm. that you know um but i obviously do understand how that can translate and come across when it's done with a lot of force and a lot of yeah yeah, so I get it. I get it. I do think power should be shared. Um, it's just learning how to do it with your partner, I guess. Um, uh, on the backdrop of of Unkanyez being a self affirmed woman who who gets herself and um, sort of has, I'd, I'd say, power. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's debatable whether she has too much power or it's the right amount of power. But <laughs> there's, <laughs> um. um but when it comes to Olandega, you say Olandega is a down-to-earth conservative woman. 
How was then Zulondega, who literally slept one day, there was a release date for adult, for adulting rather, and then, as you're saying, episode three, your social media shoots up. So in that case, how do you then handle those, I'd say, fame dynamics yeah. with your partner in your life? How are they responding to this Zulondega who's no longer a person who's just that ordinary girl whom we had a normal life with? <laughs> This question is so triggering. I'm so <laughs> yeah, I'm so triggered. But listen, okay. So um, <laughs> um, I've 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 been in corporate for a very long time, yes. right? And the last place that I worked was at a mental health institution. So it was a mental health organization, um, and being in that space has really taught me a lot about just mental health and finding the balance and sure. having you know practices and and almost rituals that help you kind of balance bring yourself down and all of those kinds of things sure so um i'm really blessed he prepared me you know in every space that he put me prior to this i think it was a build up and preparation to say oh don't get, you know, ahead of yourself, like pace yourself and also ground yourself and also continue to meditate, continue to pray. Uh, when things start getting out of control, recognize it and you know what to do when those things happen. Um, so, like I said to you, Uti, when it initially happened, I had to take time, go for therapy, you know, disappear. Um, so, I, I don't think I've changed much as Ulondeg. I think I'm still pretty much the same weird uh, goofy, clumsy, same weirdo. Uh, for as for the partner, when I go see, <laughs> I'm not dating. I'm not dating anyone. Um, so it was easy, even when we were shooting. Like, cause they kept asking me and say, they're like, "Hey, bo, where can And I'm like, yeah. "Where? <laughs> where?" <laughs> So is it is it more difficult then to attract people now? Surely it's a different dynamic now yeah. because umuntu says Elaine, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's a completely different dynamic now because I'd say, I'm sure the DMs have changed a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to name drop? I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. We wouldn't mind. No, <laughs> uh, verified accounts, DMing left, right and center. DJs. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah. So so yeah, um, definitely. I'm sure it's it's different in the way people are approaching you, yeah. Yeah. and you can't help but be very careful. Look, I've always, I was raised by very strong, wise women, and I think they imparted a lot of that wisdom and that discernment and that you know onto me, because I got it's not new, you know, because of the spaces that I've been in. Like I said, I've been in corporate. I've been in you know boardrooms i've been in spaces with people who are, have worked hard and who have accumulated wealth and who have done well for themselves and i've been in spaces with those kinds of people that you never know why like what do you want type of thing yes um there are there's a little bit of a god that's gone up a little bit more now because i'm like first of all you're a dj you've got kids and you post them yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, yes, your God has gone up. Yes, my God has definitely gone up because, um, yeah, man, I just, mm, yeah, like, yeah. like, what is it? Like, you know? So, yeah, no, definitely my God has gone up. But it's also that discernment. Like I said, I was raised by really uh, wise women. Um, and I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush for anything. I'm not in a rush for, um, I've learned to it doesn't help rushing anything like just wait but you come from a christian background yeah. londega where especially in these charismatic churches that many many people subscribe to there is a lot of pressure true true there is uh, that kind of pressure from you know the uh, the church or not necessarily the church but mm. like from people i've just never been somebody who subscribes to those things when sure. it comes to those kinds of pressures mm. like um, even in my Christian background, there was a time where I was like, guys, please give me a break on God. Like, I'm not trying to hear nothing about that because I want to pace myself and find him myself. I don't want to be told about him because then anybody can tell me anything and what, what sets this apart. 
So I've never, like I said, I'm not in a rush. Um, I believe Witty, the Lord says when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Um, so I'm waiting. Like, I'm not, I'm not even waiting. I'm just, like, I'm living. And when it happens, it happens. Um, however it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. However it happens, by whatever miracle. Yeah. Uh, besides your baby daddy, what's the most painful thing you've gone through in life? <laughs> oh, I no, did that well. Oh, no, that was good. No, that was good. <laughs> yes. So she was like a little prayer to say, it's about to go down. <laughs> oh, man. The most painful heartbreak or thing in general? In, in general. I... Thank you for making me laugh before asking this because I was probably going to fall. Um, I think it was losing my great-grandmother ne? and then losing my dad. I think those two things were really, really, um, those things shook my world and I didn't even realize it at the time. Um, my great-grandmother played such a huge role in shaping the person that I am. Okay. Um, my early childhood was spent with her. So she was my mom and my dad and she was my... God, she was my ugh, everything. Um, and so I think I've only ever known love and acceptance from her. Um, and so when she passed on, I was very confused. Um, I was like, okay, the only per why am I getting, you see, like the only person who's kind of shown me this acceptance and this love um, is now gone. Does this mean, this is where it ends for me. Um, and then I really struggled to kind of find myself and place myself anywhere. Um, I struggled to connect with my mom. I struggled to connect with, yeah. So that was really, really hard. Um, and I've never known love like that until my daughter, um, when Nukoko passed on. And then fast forward a couple of years later, I met my dad. Um, and then just as, we, just as we were sort of forming a relationship, he passes on in a very violent and, 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 and you know, painful way. And that was also very painful because I'm like, I still had so many questions. There's so many things that I think I've gone through now that if you had been around, I would have been protected from. Um, so yeah, those are the things I still kind of battle with even today. Those are things that I, I don't think I've recovered from, you know, those, those are things I can say actually literally broke pieces of my heart off. Religion has made it wrong, per se, for us to feel like the people whom we loved, who shaped our lives, um, such as your, your great-grandmother, um, it's wrong for us to believe in them in that manner because it means we are replacing God, God in the traditional sense. Um, I had Mandisa in that chair, Mandisa Tandala. She's a YouTuber. And I asked her, Mandisa, who do you pray to? She said... I pray to my mom and I pray to God because she lost her mother a few years ago. And that resonated with me so much because she's saying, I'm praying to the very person whom God sent to be God on, my, yes. on, on earth. Yes. And just because she's gone away, I still feel very connected yes. to her. And that is God for me yeah. because the way she executed motherhood on yeah. earth was godly. Yeah, absolutely. And I cannot agree with that. Like, I'm trying so hard to fight back tears because... I, I'm, yeah. Um, I won't lie. There are moments where I struggle to even connect with God. As a Christian, as somebody mm. who follows Christ, who loves God dearly, there are moments where I struggle to connect with Him. And in those moments, if I sit in solitude and, and I go, Coco, I'm, I, I, it's different. It's different. I, I feel, I, I feel an embrace. I feel, um, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, yeah. In those moments when I struggle to connect with, in, in moments where I feel like I'm going astray and I remember the things that she'd say to me, um, I quickly, I, I'm, I'm able to quickly pull myself back or I'm quickly yanked back into um, what's right and what isn't. So I, I think she's been a really good guide in the sense that even now, like the requests are different like the people that approach are different and it's my fear of the lord but also my fear of disappointing her because i'm like sure. i know what kind of woman you are i yeah. know the things that she didn't like and the things that you wouldn't be proud of and 
just the thought of you hanging your head in shame, looking at me or thinking about me or whatever the case may be, that scares me so much that I'm like, I don't care who you are, what you have, what you're offering. I am not going to disappoint my grandmother, my great grandmother. What does it do to your traumas when you lose somebody whom I'd say your, your grandmother is probably your parent. Mm. Your grandmother yeah. sounds to me like she was your mom. Yeah. Um, what does it do to one's life and emotional well-being when you lose someone like that, especially to you? Gosh, it, um, <clears throat> Yo, it changes you. And I don't think for the better, or maybe for the better, I'm going to realize this later, but it, it, so much of hurt has come from that after mm. that because mm. I got to a point where Ukoko never made me feel like I need to earn her love. She never made me feel like I need to do... I'm yeah. failing. Yeah, yeah, I get She that. never made me feel like I need to do anything special to yeah, yeah. be loved and accepted. Yeah. Um, and then losing her, I felt like, okay, now I'm going to have to prove to people why, you know, I'm deserving of affection. And then you take what you get. Even in relationships, when you meet people, you just like, you just take what you get. Even when you know that this is not what you're deserving of and this is not what it should be like, you just take what you get. Um, so, yeah, a lot of hurt, I think, has come from that. And, yeah, man, there's moments where I'm like, oh, like, I really wish you were still here. Because, yeah, yeah. Because y you're a menace that all my life, all I had to do was wake up and exist and I'd be loved unconditionally. Now, all of a sudden, getting tando mundo abuyang plutik. Getting tanda umga no tease abuing its tung shebile. Yeah. Gizek ngitik tanda family member etize gandifuni malik pele no missing cool mile now. But with my grandmother it was completely it was, yeah. unconditional. You didn't have to do anything. Mm. Um and I did I did find myself in a really weird cycle where even with my mom I had to I felt like I needed to twirl, um, to kind of get you know, um, that kind of love. So, yeah, man, it, it, it's, it's truly been something. Thank you for sharing that, um, about that even with your mom, you felt like you had to twirl because there is an, an, a conversation that is not had a lot, yeah. that it's not everybody where your mother is your queen. Yeah. Yeah. It's not everyone. It's not all yeah. of us. No, she, um, look, I'll say she's definitely grown to become that. Yeah. We've grown, I think, our relationships to that point. But I'm the middle child also. And I had all the siblings who did things by the book, I guess. And for me, coming from my great grandmother, who allowed me to be a free spirit, who allowed me to just explore and, and mm. you know, um, to come into a space where you're confined and you are, everything you do is wrong. You pass you get an award it's not celebrated you don't wash the dishes you are in trouble you know um so yeah it, it it took a while there was a time where i resented her definitely there was a time where i was just like i don't even know if this woman gave birth oh, i was probably adopted mm. um but over time no cola i think i started to understand a lot more um yeah, started to understand her a lot more. Also, we need to be kinder to parents too. Yes, because yes. they're people. They are people too. They're Just people. as we are struggling with things, oh. they were bolstered into parenthood and we're like, oh, damn, what is yeah. the what is the method to this? Let me tell you, like yeah. now, Joba and Yishu see my mom and I have this journey. Now, you cannot touch me with that woman because I think growing up, I've, like I said, I, I started to realize, see, she's actually been really strong, mm. you know, and... Sometimes the things that we go through, we don't really know how to communicate or how to... And also because of fear of what you've experienced. You want to protect and you want to... But it doesn't always translate that way. Sometimes it comes across as hate. Yeah. Meanwhile, this yeah. person is trying their best to protect you or to hide you or to, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, they're people too. And they make mistakes as well. And they're also still trying to figure it out. Sure. Um, and I know this because I'm a mom now, Yeah, you yeah. know, and I look at my daughter sometimes and I feel like she parents me and mm. I'm in awe and I'm like, you know, she's said things to me like, um, and she's five. She said things to me like, mommy, I'm upset with you, but I still love you. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, how do you? That is so smart. How do you? That is so emotionally intelligent. How do you articulate something like yeah, that? Because yeah. we associate being upset with... 
like love is something that you get only when you're good. Yeah, the yeah, second you yeah, do something, yeah. You, like you, you earn, you have to earn, earn love. Yeah, by being good. By being good. Yeah. And when someone says I'm upset with you, but I still love you, it's like it was such a world moving moment or statement for for me from a baby. You know. So again, like I said, I think I started to recognize how human my mom was, um, and God did that intentionally by making me a mom. So that I can realize, what's well, you're flawed. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah, a parent, yeah, but yeah. you're completely flawed. Before I move on from that point of 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 your relationship with your parents, mm -hmm. is surely another thing that impacted your relationship with your mom was the church, yeah. and there possibly was a point where you you were like, can we just get rid of this church? Yes, because I want to have a mom. I'm telling you, there was a time where, like I said to you, I don't want to hear anything about God. I was just like so done i was like this god again like and for me it was i think another thing that really upset me was i felt like people would always praise her on some your mom is so amazing she's and i'm like which mom <laughs> <laughs> you can't be talking about the same person i go home with yeah you know um yeah like the at church she and she's an amazing woman don't get me wrong she's an incredible incredible woman I love her to bits, um, but at the time, I just could not understand, like, why does everything have to be about this God? Like, why does, ev like, you don't I, don't, I don't feel like you see me or hear me because you're so concerned and consumed by this God. Mm, mm, um, mm, and it mm. took me growing up and having, experiencing this God to understand how things like that can happen. Yeah. Well, you're so grateful because you realize where grace has carried you from, and you're so yeah, like you just, you can't believe it. How something, how God so big can be so mindful of you um, and take something as insignificant as yourself and protect it and, and, and things like that. Then you get to a place where you're like, you can take anything away from me, but not God type of thing, you know? Sure. So I, yeah, I got to experience it and respect it a lot more as I grew, as I grew. But yeah, there were definitely times where I was just like, yeah, yeah, bonanji, yeah, bonanji, yeah, bonanji. Anybody who's about to tell me about God, yeah. like, don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Okay, I'm done with that. The yes. heavy stuff. <laughs> 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 um, a lot of people speak about the toxicity mm. in, the, in the entertainment industry media space yeah. and how, as a young, beautiful woman like yourself, you're prone to having people um, coming at you with ulterior motives, with saying they, there's an exchange of bolstering your career. Have yeah. you experienced that yet? Um, no, not yet. I've not experienced that yet. Um, I've not experienced that yet. I'm not oblivious to it, though. I do understand that that is something that happens. Um, I know of stories of people who have you know, experienced things like that, but it's not happened to me yet. Um, again, I'm really grateful for, like I said, man, God prepares you. He really does. The journey that the Lord has taken me on, I've experienced poverty not having i've experienced um being poor you know and still being at peace and then i've experienced having in abundance um you know so i'm i don't think there's anything that you can offer me that will that i will sacrifice myself and my peace for you know um, like I said, God prepares you. God, pre I've had offers, not just in the industry, in other industries. In life. Yes. Yeah. And it's just like, mm, no, thank you. I'm so confident in my God and I'm so confident in his ways and how he's prepared me that he will make a way and I've seen him do it. So you're just a human. Yeah. 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 You're a vessel, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. S yeah. Someone out there is in a job. Yeah. And I don't want to use the word stuck, but I'd, I'd want to say probably they feel stuck. They're in a corporate job um, and it no longer feeds their soul. Yeah. It no longer feels like they are carrying their message yeah. of who they are supposed to be in yeah. this world. Um, and I think you were at that point yeah. as well before this role came, came along. Um, what do you have to say to that person? Sure. I have so much to say to that person. But in summary, um, I'll say this. It's pursuing your passion and following your calling and accepting what 
has been ordained over your life is not always going to be easy. I'll tell you this for free. When I left work, uh, my corporate job, and I pursued this career, the first month after I quit, I couldn't pay for my car installment. I was broke. I was stressed. I was just like, yeah, no, everything is going. They're going to repossess, you know. Um, but there's something about walking in your truth. There's something about trusting in what's been placed inside of you and trusting the powers that be and entrusting the, those that lead you that they will always come through. They will always make a way. They will. I, it sounds so fairy taley and so crazy, but I promise you they will always make a way. First month, I couldn't, but by the end of the month, everything was sorted. I can't tell you how. Yeah. It was just kind of aligned and happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. That things started kind of piecing themselves together. Your peace and your well-being and your mental health is far more important than a check that helps you just pay your bills. Sure. Because what happens is that thing not only eats away at you, it turns you and it it actually diminishes and depletes you. Being mm -hmm. in a space where mm -hmm. you are not mm -hmm. growing and you're not productive and you're not mm -hmm. contributing mm -hmm. to it and it's not contributing to you is a slow, painful death. That's what it is. It's just, it's a matter of taking that leap of faith. And I know this sounds so crazy. A lot of people will be like, oh my God. But your peace and your well-being and your health and your life is so much more important than a check that's just going to help you pay your bills. Uh, my pastor said something about how we're not called and we're not brought here just to come, wake up, go to work, spend most of our time in an office job, come back home, sleep, only to do it again and again and again and again, pay the bills, live that life until you die. Like, w that's not what you're called here for. You, yeah. you have to experience something. And you can only experience it in your passion and in your calling. Yeah. Um, um, am I allowed to ask a woman's age? No. <laughs> no. entertainment industry. You're going to soccer age. <laughs> I've seen Kilo Kumala's like 31 on the internet. So I'm like, guys, I want to go. I want to go. I want to website. I want to go. 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 I Got a website like an agent, you know, 23. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, the industry. Listen, forever 21. <laughs> <laughs> forever 21. <laughs> and I can understand that because sometimes, you know, like you get called for jobs that the cap is 23 years old. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like. Meanwhile, there actually are people who look 23, like this particular lady. She actually does look the age. Yeah. So, yeah, it is what it is. Age ain't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, guys. No <laughs> <ways>. <laughs> uh, I'm getting into this age thing. Um, yeah. We won't mention it since, yeah. Um, I'm getting into it because what what does it do to your life um, a, as a young woman, mm. especially a young woman who goes up strongly in the faith yeah. to be pregnant? Ooh. <laughs> I know my warnings, guys. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, yo, again, look, I've never really succumbed to any kind of pressure. I've mm. never been that person. Uliana, my daughter, she saved my life. Having her saved my life. If she was not here, I would not be here today. When I had her, I lacked purpose. I didn't know what I was doing here. I didn't know. Power. I didn't, I didn't, I was like, God, I'm so done. Like, I yeah. don't have a purpose that I'm serving. Mm. I'm just existing. I'm depressed, I'm miserable, I'm suicidal. I don't want to be here anymore. I actually don't want to be here anymore. And at the time, I mean, I was dating her dad and I said to him, I actually said to him, I was like, can I have a baby? And he was like, what? And I'm like, I have a, I have a love to give, but this love is still so innocent and still so pure. And I want to share it with somebody who I feel deserves it or who I feel will reciprocate it in the same way. Sure. Um, I don't think you're that person. I love you, but I don't think you're that person. So can I have a baby? And I l swear to God, swear in my life, having her is the reason why I'm here today. Otherwise, I would not be here. I would have killed myself. I would have been dead. So I had to do it for me. I didn't really care what anybody else was going to say or what anybody else was going to think. I didn't really care what my mom was going to say. I didn't care about being kicked out, being disfellowshipped, being disowned because I needed to survive. And she was, she was that lifeline for me. 
and she still continues to be that lifeline for me. Would you say working in the mental health organization has contributed so much to being the person who was once suicidal to this Londega whom I'm sitting across and she's got so much life. She feels she's filled with so much purpose. Can I be dead honest with you? Yeah. Um, God did. Mm. I swear. I think we can attribute it to many other things, but I think fully finding Christ and finding God and having a relationship with him has helped me escape those shadows and those because nothing has affirmed me more than that relationship you know um yes being in the mental health space has played its role i think but honestly 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 speaking god did like it's, it's having a relationship with god that has saved me that has put me in this place from being once suicidal lacking purpose not understanding what i'm here for to understanding who I am in him and how he created me and how he saw me fit and how he made me and set me apart. Like there was never going to be another Londega. You're not going to find one. Um, we may have people that we share similarities with, people that I may look like, but he was so meticulous and careful and thoughtful when it came to me that he was like, the world needs this, you know? Um, and he continues to affirm me. So I think that's honestly what helps me. Do you still have any fears about being a parent? Absolutely. Absolutely. We live in such a, a scary world right now. Where yeah. I, as a grown-up, am so afraid of people. Um, I, I love people, but I'm so afraid of people. Um, and I look at my daughter, who is an absolute angel. Like, Uliana, uh, the her capacity to love scares me. Um, I'll share a quick story. There was once a time we were visiting my sister in escort and there were these kids playing. Um, and as parents, we have different parenting styles. Um, so this kid, they were playing outside and this child, you know, she's not looking taken care of. Uliana had a suite and I caught her. Sharing. <laughs> Like sucking That's in the so cute. and I, but I was, I, I, it was such a learning moment for me. Uh, I was like, she does not care yeah, about yeah, anything. Yeah, she yeah, just yeah. knows that you're, I love you, and you're, you're human, human, and let's share, and let's share. Yeah. you know, she doesn't think about all those other things. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I look at her, and I'm like, she is so welcome. She's so loving. She loves people. She, and I'm like, I'm so scared of the things that she's still going to encounter because of the heart that she carries and the posture of her heart. And I can see that even when I try to teach her to toughen up, she's just like, don't waste my time. I'm that's, I don't know who that person is type of thing. So I have those fears. I'm scared of the things that she's still going to encounter. I'm scared of uh, her experiencing heartbreak and I'm scared of her realizing that the world is not necessarily what she thinks it is. Um, and I have fears of getting it wrong, you know, especially as a young mom who's still trying to piece life together for her. Um, we spend less time together now and I'm scared that in that, I don't want to repeat a cycle because mm. I didn't have my mom when I was a baby. So I'm scared of creating that cycle, um, where it's like, it's normal for a mom to be away from her child when it's not. Mm, mm. Yeah. In a few years' time, um, because God is an amazing God, um, Ulondega is going to be a, a well-renowned thespian. Ozobesene following in Kulu, Ozobesesmazi, who's going to have acted and displayed her talent in many roles. Yeah. Uliana will also have come of age um, and she will have access to the internet in a manner where she's able to consume things about her mom. Liana comes across this video. Yeah. What do you? What are you saying to your daughter right now when she sees this video? <laughs> um, look, in anything that you do, um, check in with yourself and check in how that makes you feel, how that moves you from a place of peace, or how that brings you to a place of peace. Um, check in with yourself if it moves you from a place of peace and it feels you will always know if it's right or if it's wrong um if it feels right go for it if there's any part of you that is uncomfortable or is 
if there's any nudge from within that says don't do it don't do it when i did that i was at peace it felt right it felt like i was i was fully being i was i had full empathy for the character that i was playing so much so that i could feel what she was feeling and live and allow her to live through me type of thing so um if it brings you peace and if it feels right and if it feels like you're doing a service do it cuz for me that's what storytelling is it's a service i'm helping to tell someone's story and by doing that i'm allowing for somebody else who recognizes certain things from that person to have conversations with themselves or with whoever they need to have conversations with in order to heal yeah so yeah your mom was at peace that's what i'd say to her your mom was at peace yeah yeah, yeah. on the backdrop of that um as we near the end of our conversation um it's 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 your last day on earth um and you have 24 hours remaining who are you choosing to spend it with and what are you doing absolutely my daughter yeah. like there's no question about it i would spend the last 24 is it just one person you can cuz if it's if it's not limited to just one person yeah, it's it not limited be, <clears throat> it would be my my daughter my family and friends i've got very few friends now um it would be my daughter but, but my friends have become part of my family so it would literally be my family and my daughter that's that's what we'd be doing we'd probably spend it going not necessarily going down memory lane just just live like just living and um then praising that's what we'd be doing what i get from londega is that she's a woman of depth she's a woman of character and she's very grounded umuntu umuza uma ekhuluma the the voice and the tone that she is very deliberate and intentional about being a nice person and a kind person to others um siabonga londega for coming to the show thank you for the experience that you've given us to share your vulnerabilities um to share your emotional side with us and also be fun and quirky um with us on the show we also thankful to Olondega for her time with her team as well and now we also know that Londega's DMs are filled by very fight people <laughs> a lot of DJs there wow. but we're going to move on swiftly past that the show is engineer your life i'm lungelo <laughs> km don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and follow um you'll find L- londega as l underscore cishi on all social media platforms uh, uh she's a very beautiful woman so now there's nothing there's nothing scary there so zibonela nje this look look cheese look cream nje lo ben hle zina hona um yeah i'll see you in the next episode bye bye in <laughs> oh, thank you so much